Hi everybody, thanks for coming to the uh, security panel. We are um, a team of professionals who are in the security business and we're going to talk about how marketing uh, applications and security and uh, stadiums and teams are all going to start converging so that uh, data and information will start going through the security portal. Uh, we have a number of professionals here. We have Andy Lynch from uh, SQ Event Security, Liz Leckenby from Bruno Event Team, uh, Owen Gill from uh, Foam Hand, uh, Mike Bracci from the uh, Miami Marlins, and uh, Joe Tassini from the Dolphins. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, the first uh, start of the conversation is, uh, uh, let's just start with Andy. So Andy, you've been doing a lot of security operations in outdoor events and stadiums recently. So what do you see uh, as part of the fan experience that you've been using? Yeah, so I, I think that, um, you know, from the fan experience, right or wrong, the, you know, the primary indicator of success or failure when they go through the checkpoint, and the checkpoint is usually the first touch that they have with the stadium, is how quickly they get through the line. Um, uh, maybe unfortunately, because as guys like Mike and Joe have a very important job to do of securing this, the stadium and protecting the fans, but um, it, it seems to be that you know having a, a lack of confusion uh, and speed to the security checkpoint uh, seems to be that you know the success or failure in the minds of the fans as they come to the stadium and. Uh, I guess I'd like to hear from Mike and Joe with their thoughts on that and kind of as you guys build out your security protocols and you, and you look at threats and you look at the venue and how to plug holes, how much do you also consider the fan experience and, and getting the fans through quickly while also maintaining a high level of security? <laughs> it's a good point. I mean, Andy, I, I even think it, it starts even further out. Um, it, it probably starts even in the parking areas, you know, you know what I'm saying, as, as a fan, Absolutely. the experience. And, and it's, it's funny because you say like the, the fan experience and, and security, it's a, it's a fine balance between the two because, you know, we're not running a, a top uh, government facility or a nuclear right. type facility or whatever. We're actually, you know, an entertainment when you think yeah. about it. We're, we're like Disney, but for professional sports. So yeah. we have to keep that in mind that, you know, we want the fans, the guests, our employees to be safe at the same time, but also we want them to come back, we want them to enjoy themselves, we want them to spend money. We're a for-profit, uh, you know, Mike and I were talking about that yeah. business. So absolutely at the security checkpoint, but I think even further out now when you think about it is uh, the biggest concern more so for me is the parking, especially in professional uh, American football is the yeah. parking areas, you know, traditional tailgating and people are out in the parking lots and um, the cars coming in are not swept because it's a, our lot holds 20,000 cars. Right. So it would be virtually impossible unless there's advancements in technology which are on its way yeah. to screen every vehicle as it's coming in and not slow it down. But back to your original question, it is, it, you know, we try to, we try to, I go around the league and I'll look at different, when I'm traveling with the team, I'll look at different venues and I'll stop for 10, 15 minutes just to watch ingress when gates yeah. open. And I, I'll watch the, the fan experience and to see some of the uh, cold weather cities, they have a challenge because a lot of people have heavy coats on and things of that nature. So it's a little more difficult. And then you have the whole bag search process, which we yeah. talked about. You want to make sure the bags are searched properly, but at the same time, you can't have a guest waiting 15 minutes Correct. and going yeah. through everything, liquids and things of that nature. It's not the airport, it's not yeah. TSA. So 100% um, you know, balance between security and the fan experience. And we look closely, the NFL has um, the survey, the fan surveys afterwards. And, yep. and part of the survey talks about the security process and how was your experience at the gates getting in and things of that nature. And yep. we look at it and we take that seriously and we try to make adjustments on that, on the positive and Fantastic. You know, comments. I, I think to agree with both, um, the, the experience starts way before they get to the facility, to the venue, to the ballpark, to the stadium, to the arena. It starts with, and, and, and my organization here, the Marlins, we have new ownership and, and, and our, our goal to build and maintain a first class organization is branding that message. Just like anybody, when you're branding your message is that 
Is it an easy experience to buy the ticket, first of all, whether it's online or it's, it's a mobile app? Um, you know, we want it to be easy because we yeah. want to masquerade security measures to not make it an inconvenience for the, for the guests or the fans. So we try to incorporate all that, and, and I meet with our marketing folks, I meet with our ticket sales uh, department, just to try to implement different procedures to educate the fans and the guests, because we have 81 home games. Right. That's a lot. So we don't want somebody to come, not be able to park, not be able to get their tickets delivered online, and then be inconvenienced in a screening line that they feel like, like Joe alluded to, like they're going into the Pentagon or, right. or the White right. House. Absolutely. It's, it's safety is everybody's responsibility, but it's yeah. our responsibility, we feel, to educate them and to work with our organization and our partners to make it an overall favorable guest and fan experience because we want them to come back. Because we know in our business, People may come to a game, they may not, not know who won the game, who lost the game, who was playing, but right. we want them to enjoy Marlins Park. And, and it all starts when they're at home and they decide to spend their money to come for the event. And I think as marketing departments, as ticketing departments, you have to work and security always has to have a seat at the table for yep. any event that's planned. However, we can work to make it a favorable experience for everybody because Everybody has a job to do, right? And we want to we want to be a part of that. We don't want to be a hindrance or an obstacle. We want to be a part of it because security is a cost. It's an expense. It's like an insurance right. policy, right? You don't need it until you need it. Right. So we we just have to be there and work favorably with all our all our corporate partners and our internal departments as well to make it a more favorable experience. And for uh, Owen and Liz, in your your guys' experience, Owen with Foam Hand and, and kind of doing tier one events like the Olympics and the crowd management planning, and Liz with your background doing event as an event director and event manager for, for golf tournaments and other large scale events. As you guys look at how to manage the crowd flow or manage security, what other things are you guys looking at to kind of get people through quickly or, you know, whether it's, it's data analysis beforehand to, to plan solutions to get the crowd there or, or Liz with marketing techniques like web apps or what have you to kind of educate the fans on where to go and what to do. What are, what are the kind of things that you guys see? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I would be echoing a lot of what, what Mike and Joe were saying in terms of yeah. the physical security and safety operation does start from the transport hub, but the communication piece starts from home, right? As soon as someone decides to buy the ticket, it does start from home. But uh, how we look at an event is we're looking at it, number one, from a security perspective, and then yeah. number two, uh, from the safety perspective, and, and can that, what's the impact for, of the security solution on the actual safety, and is it the space within the, the areas outside for ingress to, to implement those security procedures, and then how the engagement piece takes place after that with the, with the fans. I think with, um, with a lot of the events that, that Bruno Venti manages, um, you know, we, we're fortunate in that we have some events that occur on an annual basis or a regular basis, such as a game day operation. Uh, then we have some events that are, are one-off, and so we only have one chance to get that right. And so a lot of the events that I've been involved over time have been a one-off USGA championship, for instance, and, and we have one chance to make that fan experience great. And so all the things that Mike was, was talking about with making sure that fan experience is great from the outset, buying the ticket, how do you find information? What can you bring to the event? What's the bag policy? Um, what, where, how do you find directions? If you're on your phone trying to get to the parking lot, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to find where the heck you're supposed to go to park and, um, and where the directions are. Where's drop off if it's Uber? Um, so everything that we do, we try and put ourselves in the shoes of the fan to, to make sure that that experience is great for them. Um, it's just, it's just so critical to help, you know, the, it's a common fact that sports attendance is declining, and it's not just in the United States, you know, college football um, is seeing that. Even the University of Alabama, we manage a game day operation for Alabama, and I know that might not be the most popular team in this market, um, <laughs> but in the state of Alabama, it's quite popular, and, uh, um, you know, even across college football in the United States, they're seeing a declining in attendance, and we're, we're challenged with, um, television production is even better than it's ever been and your couch is super comfortable and you can have 
your iPad on one game and your TV on multiple games and your phone in your hand and your beer is cold next to you and, and you have a great experience from your home. So that's the challenge of making sure that we deliver a great experience when we arrive to the venue. And it all starts with you know where you're parking, are you shuttling in? What happens when you're on the shuttle? Are you watching a video if you're shuttling in, if you're not able to park on site? Do you have entertainment in the parking lot? Um, do you have a good experience straight through from when you leave your house to you get into your comfortable seat at the arenas and stadiums? I think on that note, if I, if I may add, and, and we are here in our home ballpark, so you got to know your audience, right? I mean, from marketing standpoints and, and, and strategies and. Same thing for security. I mean, yeah. we have to brand our security message in the form of signage and audio recordings, and we have to do it in multiple languages, right? Because we are in the melting pot, and, and that's our audience. And I'm sure Joe has the same, you know, obstacles. And, and it's and it's something that we embrace. If you, if you guys aren't aware, we released our new logo yesterday, and we're <laughs> we're embracing our community, Los Colores, and and it's something that that you try to connect with and get on a a platform with them that, hey, you know, we understand you may not be familiar with the process and what we're trying to do, but we're going to try to communicate that, whether it's through the MLB ballpark app, the Marlins app, um, or our signage or our audio recordings, because it's, it's important that they know, because a lot of people, when they come to a baseball game, they don't anticipate having to go through the measures that we put them through. We want them to be comfortable with that. And I think that's an important aspect of our operations here at, at Marlins Park. Well, and I think with a lot of the things you just touched on, communication is, is key in all of those elements and, and just making sure that you're communicating with your fans and your spectators. And so one of the things that we do for the University of Alabama football um, with game day operations is we actually send someone up in a helicopter every single game where they're looking at traffic flow, ingress. If there's an accident, we're constantly communicating. Um, we're pushing out social media. Twitter is our best friend on game day. and so. We want to make sure that we're constantly communicating so that people have real live time information so that they can um, seek alternate routes or whatever the case might be. So speaking of communicating to your fans, um, those sound like a lot of platforms that you're using to do that. I know that um, Major League Soccer and other um, team organizations are developing applications. Um, do you see uh, security as being part of those applications in the near future. So say you bought your ticket and you uh, order your shirt size or you know order your favorite meal, do you also get some sort of like clearance or something through that app? So do, or have any of you seen that or, or looked at that type of technology that can be integrated into the security portal? <laughs> I mean, we we're just talking about this. It, I think all the advancements that we're seeing in technology are, are going to be great for the security side of the house, but also for the fan experience, too. Um, you know, you look at I, my previous career was with the government and working with the military, and a lot of those advancements in technology we're now seeing brought over to the uh, private sector and the, the consumer side of it. And let's say analytics or biometrics, it's going to make security better, and it's also going to make the fan experience a lot better. So you can use, let's say, facial recognition or a retinal scan or something like that. It's almost, uh, you use it on the perimeter to get through security to show, hey, it's almost like a trusted fan program, we call it, where this fan's been a season ticket holder for years, their family's registered, um, we'll do an annual background check and things of that nature, maybe even monthly background check, and it'll help them get through the screening process a lot quicker but also that technology can be leveraged inside. And what I like about it is you can do a, some, uh, a geofence around the stadium and you know when they actually park and they're coming in. So now someone from guest experience or from our corporate sponsorship can have their favorite drink ready for them, could have some jerseys ordered up for their children or their family, could have their box ready to go with the food that they like and things of that nature. So it also could be used, as I was talking earlier, at, at some of our um, merchandise or, or places where we sell alcohol. Uh, you walk up and the facial recognition shows the person's uh, legal drinking age. It shows that they have a valid credit card on file. It shows that um, they maybe only had two drinks in the last hour, so you can serve them another drink. So it, it, the advances in technology are, are going to be our friend on the security side, but we can also leverage those advancements in technology to help 
the business, uh, you know, make money and market and keep the fans coming back and enhance that experience like Mike was talking about. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So. What other technologies do you guys see um, that as being critical, uh, say, over the next 12 to 18 months to implement uh, either from a sec you know, security perspective or from a event management, crowd management perspective? What what kinds of emerging technologies do you guys kind of have your eyes on and are, and are looking at as, and this, this could really help out our mission to provide uh, excellent security at, a, at, at an event and also help with the fan experience? Um, <clears throat> for us, Major League Baseball, um, it's, it's becoming almost a, a, a mandate, and, it's, and, it, and it's, it's a positive one where, like Joe alluded to and mentioned, facial recognition. You know, again, I mentioned we play 81 home games. I mean, it's an awful lot, but we will utilize this technology that is being pushed out over the course of the next season. Yeah. Um, not only for the fans, but for our own employees, because you want to know who's working for you, right? I mean, you want to know who has access to your critical infrastructure and, and is aware of your safety plans and emergency plans, but facial recognition for us is, is something on the horizon and that it is, it is being pushed out um, the biometrics, which I know Joe had alluded to and mentioned earlier as well, but I think, I think it's security was, was one of those afterthoughts, but right. now it is at the forefront. And in today's climate, you know, we just turn on the, the TV and unfortunately you hear about it everywhere. And it's yeah. just not specific to sports, but I think technology, as we know, and, and, in, the, and in the marketing side of the operations, it gives us a way to track our people. Yep. You know, you want to track your customers. You want to stay in touch with your clients. And for us, on game days here, like Joe mentioned as well, you want to know who's coming into your building. I mean, right. you know, when they buy those tickets or they and they, they access the, the application, the ballpark application or the Marlins, and it's a way, technology that is, that is allowing us to monitor them, not only their buying and spending trends, but how frequent do they come? And, right. and are they a threat? And I think facial recognition will allow us to match the name with the face, and it also enhances the guest and fan experience and the marketing possibilities and future ticket sales, because now you have a face with the name. And it, yeah. and it also enhances the security side of, of the operation yeah. as well. When I, I think, think of the benefits of something like that, you know, having worked in, in golf for so long, you know, women's golf um, in particular has an issue on occasion with stalkers and, and we've had, you know, security personnel who have identified certain per people who, you know, need to be removed from the ground. So when you think of athlete right. safety, you know, facial recognition will just make that job so much easier. I mean, a golf yeah. course is generally a very porous environment, unlike, you know, a stadium, arena, ballpark. Um, so when you think about, you know, how do you secure the perimeter of a golf course, in general, it's not very capable. You're not very capable of doing it um, without there being an ex extensive cost. And so right. when you think of athlete right. safety, I mean, to me, that is a technology that is just going to make that element of it that much easier from a security standpoint. I think one thing, I know we're running out of time, but uh, a hot topic, and I'm sure everyone in this room uh, would agree, is uh, drones. I mean, drones, I don't, I don't care what type of event it is, whether it's soccer, whether it's American football, whether it's baseball, open air uh, stadiums, golf you mentioned, tennis, US Open, Formula One, we could just keep going and going. Drones are a legitimate threat. Um, you've seen on the internet and on the news, uh, a drone can carry a payload of explosives, a drone can carry chemicals, a, the, the, the drone itself can just cause panic and cause a stampede if it's a crowded stadium. So I know in the United States there's um, they're working um, very aggressively to change some of the legislation in our government because there is equipment out there. I've seen it used on the military side in, in right. Syria and Iraq where we could actually take over the drone signal and we could intercept the drone. We could identify the operator. We can take control of the drone and land it or, or bring it down immediately. But unfortunately, the laws in the United States don't allow that right now, legislation. So they're trying to rewrite some of those, those laws dealing with aviation. And I don't know if anybody, everybody in here is from the United States, but from wherever you're from, whatever country, I'm sure you're having the same challenges because uh, 
drones and we call them unmanned aerial systems are one of the fastest growing industries, especially when on the hobbyist side of it, where right. you go to Target or Walmart or any hobby shop. Like for Christmas, drones will be flying off the shelf, uh, no pun intended. Yeah. But you know, that, and so for us, it's a big, big challenge on the security side in the parking lot, over the bowl of the stadium or the pitch in soccer. And uh, you know, it's something that we're constantly talking about daily. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it certainly seems like in the interactions that I've had, uh, the fans are, are much more in tune with the security protocol. They're, they're actually evaluating it as part of their fan experience and saying, yeah, is the security adequate enough? It doesn't make me want to come back just because of the threats that are out there. So certainly all, a lot to think about and, and, a, and a lot uh, uh, to consider, especially as we, as we look forward and, and kind of marry up the, the available technologies that are out there to create positive fan experience, but also uh, make the event as safe as possible. So just guys, really thank you for your time. It was yeah. uh, appreciated. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? That was pretty easy.